Hey there. If you haven't noticed, like many of you, I am stuck at home in quarantine. That means no fancy equipment, no cool video gear. I am recording on my phone and my laptop. But funnily enough, I'm in a very similar situation to many of you who are trying to get your services up online and you're stuck at home without any equipment. A couple weeks ago, we made a video on how to get online as quickly as possible for as cheap as possible using a particular software known as OBS. We got a ton of positive response from the video, but a lot of questions that came along with it as well. Today, I want to clear up as many of those questions as I can and help you learn everything there is to know about OBS for churches. Welcome to Black Bar. Hi, I'm Caleb. Nearly all of the questions we're going to be answering here today were asked by people on our Discord channel. If you have any difficulties implementing any of the stuff we talked about or even getting online in general, we have tons and tons of people willing and ready to help you get online. We are all in this together. Mana. Number one, sermon slides and lyrics. One of the most often asked questions we get regarding live streaming with OBS is how to get sermon slide or lyric overlays up on the stream. At first, it doesn't seem like there's a super obvious way to do this, but fortunately there is slideshow functionality built into OBS itself. Let's take a look. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make your slides and your overlays. As amazing as OBS is, it's not an image editing platform. You're gonna need another program to do that. If you're using PowerPoint for your slides, just export them as JPEGs or PNGs. Same thing goes for ProPresenter. If you wanna make overlays for lyrics that go on top of the video that you're already showing, you're gonna to need to save them as a PNG with a transparent background. If you have Photoshop, this is super easy. Type the text you need to, delete the background, file, save as, and then PNG. You'll need to do this for every single one of the lines, so get to typing. Once you're done, head over to OBS and create a new scene. Hit the plus button under sources and click image slideshow. After naming it, you're gonna to wanna to change a couple settings. First, set slide mode to manual and change the transition to whichever you'd like. Then scroll down to image files and add all of your slides here. If done correctly, you should be looking at the first slide in your slideshow. Now we're going to need to bind a hotkey to switch between the slides as we're going. Head to settings, hotkeys, and scroll down until you find image slideshow. Bind next slide and previous slide to whichever is most convenient for you and hit OK. Now using those same buttons, you should be able to switch between the different slides you have in your slideshow. Easy as that. If you're doing this with an overlay or anything that goes on top of the footage that you're already showing, make sure you also add your video input as a source underneath your graphics. In addition, there's no great way to skip over slides like you can in ProPresenter or PowerPoint. So if you're programming lyrics with repeating choruses or verses, make sure you put them all in sequentially in the order that they're gonna get played. Next, let's talk about multicam setups and switching between them. On our Discord, we've been recommending the Blackmagic ATEM Mini for anybody who's getting into the basics of video switching with hardware. Unfortunately, due to the situation we're all in right now, they're sold out nearly everywhere. Not only that switcher, but nearly every somewhat affordable switcher is gone off the shelves. That leaves a lot of churches scrambling for a software way to accomplish the same task. Fortunately, OBS has us covered for free. First, you're gonna to wanna to set up all of your video devices as individual scenes in OBS. If you haven't done that before and you don't know what you're doing, I highly suggest checking out the video we did on the subject linked up here. Now, switching between the cameras is as easy as clicking on the different scenes. But if you wanna get a bit fancier with it, you can pop open OBS's built-in studio mode. Studio mode is handy because it lets you preview scenes before you cut to them, like a normal switcher can. Just preview the scene you'd like to cut to and then hit transition to actually make the cut. If you'd like, you can even set up a keybind to do this so you can do all of this through your keyboard. Next, let's talk about how to improve the overall video quality of what you're streaming. Most of the at-home live streams I've seen, unfortunately, are a lot of pastors looking down at their laptop with the webcam looking straight up their nose. Number one, that's not a great angle. Number two, your webcam typically isn't a great camera. Number three, there's a lot of easy compositional things you can keep in mind to make the image more interesting. Number one, let's talk about the angle first. In general, you're gonna to wanna to try to get the camera at least at eye level height or a little bit higher. This is gonna make you look more personable, more professional, and 
way more presentable. In addition to shooting higher, I also suggest that you get away from a wall and shoot with a room to your back. In general, it makes you feel more open and inviting. Yes, you do have to clean up a little bit, but I promise you, it'll be worth it. Number two, let's talk about your camera. What I'm not gonna do is suggest you go out and buy a thousand dollar camera from your local store. You probably already have one of those sitting in your pocket. If you happen to have an iPhone, there's a super affordable app on the App Store called Camera for OBS Studio. This allows you to connect your camera via USB to your computer and use it as a video input in OBS. The app is $16, but comparatively to a brand new webcam, that's pennies. Plus, as of the recording of this video, nearly every webcam in every store is sold out. If you doubt the video quality of this stream, that's actually what you're watching right now. I have my iPhone 11 plugged into my laptop and I'm recording via OBS. All you have to do to get it working is download the app via the App Store, install an extra plugin that you can find online for free into OBS, link in the description, create a new iOS camera source, and select your phone from the list. Now you have a much higher quality camera to shoot with. Now that you have a quality image to start with, you can actually dial down the picture a little bit more by using some of the built-in color correction software in OBS. Simply right-click on your video source and hit Filters. Hit the plus under effects filters and go to color correction. Here you can adjust gamma, contrast, brightness, saturation, even shift the hue. Now if your scene is a little bit too dark or a little bit too bright, you can remedy the situation. Now let's talk about the other half of your live stream. We have the video done, now let's figure out the audio. Audio is, unfortunately, an incredibly overlooked half of the equation when we talk about live streaming. Quality signal is an incredibly important part of making your stream watchable, or I guess, listenable. First, you're gonna need to get the input into your computer. Again, if you haven't done that yet, I highly suggest checking out the video we put out a couple weeks ago on how to get set up for live streaming for as cheap as possible. If you're still in a situation where you can stream from your sanctuary, make sure you're mixing for the stream audio, not the room. That means shutting off the mains in the house and putting on the best pair of headphones you have to hear how it sounds to the people watching on the stream. In addition, in general, you're gonna wanna be putting a lot more volume to your stream than you typically would for your sanctuary. In your sanctuary, it's okay if the worship team is much louder than your pastor. People can still hear your pastor even though they heard the loud worship team a couple minutes ago. When it comes to live stream, the dynamic range you have between the loudest and the quietest thing is much smaller, meaning that you have to mix your pastor just as loud as the entirety of the worship team in order for your listeners to be able to hear them both equally. This is going to sound strange to the audio guys who haven't done this before, but if you're mixing for the stream, you want to be sending as close to zero decibels as possible. In reality, you should be between negative six and zero all of the time. To prevent clipping, there actually is a built-in limiter in OBS. It's not fantastic, but it does the job. Just right-click on your audio source, head to Filters, then hit the plus and click Limiter. Make sure the threshold is set to zero and you should be set to go. If you're streaming at home by yourself and you don't have access to any audio equipment, kind of like where I am right now, you're gonna wanna try to eliminate as many external sounds as possible. That might mean temporarily unplugging your fridge. That definitely means turning off your heat. All of those ambient sounds will add up to a lot of extra noise in your recording that just makes it difficult to concentrate on what you're trying to say. Before we move on, I've seen a lot of people have issues with desync in their streams, where the video and the audio aren't quite lined up. Fortunately, this is a super quick and easy problem to solve. Right click on your audio source and click Advanced Audio Properties. All you have to do here is play around with the sync offset. There's no super magic way to know what the exact number is, you just kind of have to fiddle with it and figure out what your offset needs to be. I would suggest clapping on camera. It gives you a really obvious frame when the clap happens and a really obvious transient when you can hear it. Next, let's talk about an interesting one. We've gotten the question multiple times now of how I can use my OBS output as a webcam on my camera, maybe for Zoom or Team or Discord calls. This could be an incredibly helpful feature for small group leaders who are wanting to show their screen or have a more professional look overall. Fortunately, this is super easy to do. You'll need an extra plugin called OBS Virtual Cam. We'll have it linked down in the description. 
Once installed, it treats OBS as if it was an actual virtual webcam, allowing you to select it from any of the video chat platforms that you might be using. Once it's set up, you can switch around angles, you can use overlays, you can configure your audio. It's a really super helpful plugin. Lastly, let's talk about a question we've got plenty of times. How do I stream to Facebook and YouTube and anywhere else at the same time. Unless you have an extra computer sitting around for every location you wanna to stream to, you're gonna to need to buy a subscription to any one of the many distribution streaming websites that are available. A really popular one we've seen with plenty of success in the past is Restream.io. Now I cover this last because at least for businesses, Restream.io is a $100 a month subscription. That's a lot of cash, especially if you haven't done something like this before. But if needing to stream to multiple sources is super important to you, this is how you do it. First, make an account and then log into all of the platforms you'd like to stream from. Then head over to settings and then streaming setup. Copy the stream key and head back to OBS. Click on settings, stream, and then change the service to restream IO RTMP. Then just paste the stream key into the box and hit OK. When it's time to go live, make sure to set your title to whatever you'd like it to be in Restream, then simply go live with OBS. And there you have it, streaming to multiple platforms as easy as it can be. So I hope this video was as helpful as it can be for churches all around the world looking to get set up with live streaming as fast as possible. As much as the whole situation of the pandemic is horrible, I think this is going to be a marked point in history for a lot of churches to understand the power of digital ministry. We are on the forefront of a new generation of technology and ministry, and I'm super excited to see where that goes. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Black Bar. If you haven't yet, make sure to like and subscribe. If you want to dive deeper into anything we talk about here on the show, make sure to check out the podcast released every Wednesday. Again, if you have any more questions, check out our Discord, and we will see you next week.